All right, good evening, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, good evening. Welcome to the session. Good evening. As you come in, just go to the chat and tell us where you're joining us from, from Lagos, Abuja, Enugu, from any part of Nigeria that you're joining us from. Please, as you join, please go to the chat and just drop where you're coming, you know, joining us from and do welcome everyone. So let's keep it interactive. Let's go to the chat and welcome everyone. Good evening. And if you know anybody that is supposed to be here, reach out to, to them right about now. Tell them we have started. Welcome, welcome. My name is Nkechi Ojiego. And um, I am the coordinator for Mature Professionals, but new to HR Group 2 for this semester. I have my colleague, Taiwo Inyang, that you get to meet very soon. She's the coordinator for Group 1. You are all welcome. So please go to the chat. Welcome as you join the session. Go to the chat and tell us where you're joining us from. If you're joining from Enugu, from Abuja, from Abiyokuta, from even outside the country, because I'm aware we have people joining from outside the country. So as you join us, please just go to the chat and say welcome to our colleagues and tell us where you're joining us from. And if you know anybody that is supposed to be here that is not here yet, please reach out to them. Tell them we have started. Good evening, welcome, 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 welcome to the session today. It promises to be fun. So welcome, 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 welcome everyone. Welcome everyone. Welcome, 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 welcome. So um, we're gonna quickly start the session with an opening prayer by Evangeline Okon. Evangeline Okon is um, a member of Mature Professionals but new to HR Group 1. So Evangeline, if you can hear me and you're on this call, please open the session for us with a prayer before we start you know, for today. Thank you, Evangeline, over to you, thank you. Please take the opening. Okay, greatness, please take the opening prayer. Thank you. Oh. Okay, good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, we, yes, can. we can. Thank okay, you. Okay, good um, evening, everyone. Thank you so much for the privilege to take the opening prayer. Father, we thank you. We appreciate you for another time to learn at your feet. Thank you for um, TCN. Thank you you for this community group. Thank you for our leaders. Thank you for our facilitator that you're using for us today. Thank you for our career. Thank you because you are very intentional about our lives. Lord, we commit tonight's um, teaching and learning and webinar onto your hand. We ask that, <laughs> sorry about that. We ask that your will will be done in the name of Jesus. We ask that you will speak through the vocal cords of our facilitator and you speak through his mind. We ask that we also, our hearts will be open to receive from you. And at the end, we'll have every cause to glorify your name. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. So the session is formally open. Once again, good evening and welcome to the session. You know, today is all about HR certifications. And this session is by mature professionals, but new to HR. So um, 
you're welcome. It promises to be fun. Let's keep it very interactive. And please, let's try as much as possible to reduce the distortions and noise from our environment. So please, as you join the session, please mute your microphones and please turn off your cameras. You can only turn on your camera when you have to speak. And if you want us to put a beautiful face or handsome face to the voice and the name. So please make sure your microphones are muted at all times and your camera is turned up. Now, like I said, we have the chat room. You can drop your feedback, questions in the chat room. And as our facilitator is taking us through the session and knowledge is flowing and everything and you're enjoying it, please let us know so that the facilitator can also know that we are all here in class. Now, but before we even go into meeting the facilitator, looking at his profile and all that, I'm going to invite my colleague, like I said to you, Taiwo Inyang, to quickly introduce us to this whole group um, mature professionals but new to HR and what this whole session is all about. So Taiwo, Iyang, over to you right about now. Thank you. All right. Good evening, everyone. Um, I hope you can hear me well. Can I just see in the chat if you can hear me say good evening. So I welcome you all. Uh, that was uh, Nkechi, uh, my colleague in the um, Academy for yeah, thank you, greatness. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Bolanle. You're welcome. Thank you, Jane. Yes, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thank you, uh, Onahi. Praise. Thank you. All right, so that was in Kechi. Uh, thank you, Kem. All right, so um, like she said, this fireside chat uh, is the first in the series that we're going to be having uh, this semester. So this academy is uh, for the matured professionals, but new. Uh, to HR. So uh, we're glad to have everyone. Th I, I really like the turnout. Thank you so much for the energy. Uh, so like I was saying during the onboarding, we have a group of people who are matured uh, professionals. But I mean, they just found, they, they suddenly just find themselves in HR. And uh, for some, it can be very, very challenging. I spoke about my friend uh, she actually just got a job, right, as uh, the head of HR in a company in the North. And she's completely new to HR. Uh, but that's why this academy has been put in place uh, to help you know, the, this category of people. For some people that join HR, uh, though not experienced, but on a lower level. But for some, it's a big deal because it's you know, at a managerial level. So the essence of just putting together this academy is just to help out, you know, to make the, the transition easier, to provide the guidance and so uh, in the course of this semester, our desire is that you would have picked up enough knowledge, you know, to help you at this stage, you know, of your career. Like we said, we can't handle every bit of HR, but we will do as much, you know, as we can. So we welcome everyone again. Uh, this is the Academy for the Matured Professionals of New to HR. We have a wonderful facilitator in the house, you know, this evening, Mr. So I'm going to hand over back to Nkechi now to read the profile, you know, of our facilitator and welcome him. So Nkechi, over to you right now. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much, Sister Taiwo. So like Sister Taiwo said, we have an erudite HR professional in the house with us today that will be engaging us. He will be providing his wealth of knowledge in the area of HR certifications. So I'll quickly share his profile so that as I read his profile, you can also see why I have said that he's an erudite HR professional. All right, so Oluyami Adeosho is a top performing, accomplished human resource executive with over 16 years plus of experience that spans power, oil and gas sector, telecommunications, broadcasting, real estate, advertising and consulting. He's also involved in a couple of volunteer work. He's a versatile human resources professional with expertise in training and development, organizational strategy, develop, that's organizational strategy development, business partnering, change management and employee relations. Oluyemi, who is currently a PhD student at the University of Lagos, holds a BS in economics from the University of Illinois, MS in economics from the University of Lagos, and an MBA from Obafemi Awolowo University. 
He's a member of the set of the Chartered Institute of Personnel Management of Nigeria, MCIPM, and sits on the governing council of the institute. He's also a senior professional human resources international, SPHRI, and a global practitioner human resource professional, GPHR. Oluyemi is a member of Toastmasters International and is fully certified as a distinguished Toastmaster, DTM. He currently serves as the group head, Acelorex Holdings Limited. Before his current role, he has held strategic HR leadership roles in Ikeda Electric, Korea Plus Limited, Russell Smith Integrated Oil Services, Field Co Limited, and Resources Technology Distributions Limited, and several other companies he's has stints in. In addition to his HR practice, he's an ardent researcher and has published 31 papers in reputable journals in Nigeria. Now, if you can see the link here, if you click on the link or you copy it, it takes you to a page where you can see some of the publications by our facilitator today. And for those of us that know HR Mentoring Series, he is the brain behind HR Mentoring Series. So without much ado, please, everyone, let's go to the chat and just welcome Mr. Oluyemi Adeoshu with a clapping, you know, with a clap of hand or whatever excited or excitement emojis, whatever it is you want to welcome him with. Please go to the chat and welcome him with that while I hand him the session over to him formally. So on this point, Mr. Oluyemi Adeoshu, the floor is all yours. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sister Nketi. Thank you so much, Sister Tao, and the entire leadership of the TCN HR Community Group and the TCN Community Group in general. Honestly, I must say I'm very humbled, delighted, and I count it as a real privilege to, to, to be here. Thank you so much for, for your kind words. I was thinking maybe you are reading the citation of someone else. Thank you to everyone who has joined this call at, as at now over 60 people. Thank you for spending this time, this schedule to have this session with us. I'll go straight into it. And when I was told to be that I will facilitate this session, I thought about a few things and I quickly got to work. Did additional research just to make sure that this session is worthwhile. Again, during the course of this session, if you have questions, comments, contributions, or if you get certain insights, feel free to drop it in the chat box. I'll take time to, to read it. All right, thank you so much. And we'll go right into it. Now, first and foremost, let me say that there are many different types of certifications. Now, coming home to HR, there are also many different types of certifications and different certification body. This session upfront cannot cover or explore all the different types. On a general note, almost every country in the world would typically have an institute or an association that is responsible for regulating HR in that country, which means if you go to Ghana, Senegal, South Africa, Kenya, and of course, Europe and other continents, you will see something similar. So that will presuppose that if you are going to another country to practice, it may make a lot of sense to inquire about the HR certification body or bodies, because in some countries, they have more than one. For example, United States, where they host both the SHRM and the HRCI, so that you can find the one relevant. For example, in UK, CIP, all right? So there are multiple options. Let me say that, and each has their strengths and their area of focus relative to the area of geography they are concerned. But today, briefly, I'll talk about the ones showing now on your screen very briefly, HRCI, SHRM, CIPD, and of course, charity they say begins at home. At least a lot of people are here based in this country and those that have jackpot will one day come back here, will be here for you. All right. So as a professional in HR or aspiring professional in HR, why do you need HR certification? Why do you need HR qualification? There are multiple routes to knowledge, multiple routes. Let me quickly explain that. 
One, you can acquire knowledge by direct on the job exposure. So maybe you find yourself either intentionally by design or by coincidence in the HR department, and you are working there, working with other professionals, you learn the ropes. That way you will get hands-on practical HR experience, and that is beautiful. Or perhaps you even went to the university for your first degree and you studied maybe industrial and personnel relations, okay? Or you study human resource management or any related course. There are also some courses, for example, that have significant HR subject matter, for example, business administration, maybe sociology, psychology. Sometimes some of these courses may have either elective or core courses. So I am also aware that you could have gone to a university for your first degree and studied HR. Or as a little more common, maybe a master's in maybe industrial psychology, um, industrial relations, human resource management, and so on and so forth. So you can see that I mentioned two routes now on the job, going to a formal, uh, going to a university, getting a direct education. A third option is also by certification. Now, typically too, it's not out of place if you get all your HR knowledge and experience from these three combined. In other words, you probably have a degree in HR or something along that line. You have HR experience and you have HR certification. Even with respect to certifications too, there are also people with multiple certifications and there are various reasons for, for that. Some have one, some have two, I've met people with four or five. You know, some people have appetite for certain things more than other people, which is also understandable. So that we are all on the same page. Let me quickly define what a certification is. Human resource certification is a designation, okay, offered to HR professionals, proving that the individual has acquired the relevant knowledge and skills to perform the job. Two key words here, knowledge, skills. Knowledge, skills. Knowledge, skills. Note that down, okay? Another definition is an HR certification demonstrates an understanding of the skills, competencies, and knowledge needed to be a successful HR practitioner. Three words here, even though two may look like synonyms, skills and competencies, sometimes they may look like synonyms, and then knowledge again. Key emphasis here now on demonstrating an understanding, which means beyond reasonable doubt, you must be familiar. Please follow me. Okay, so HR certification is also a professional title that demonstrates your mastery of subjects related to HR practice. Keyword here, yeah. mastery, mastery. When you say somebody is a master, you know, for those of us back in the days that used to watch movies, Kung Fu Chinese movies, when they refer to someone as master, you will typically ex expect that anybody they bring to fight the master will lose the bout to the master. Why? There is no kind of challenge the master cannot summon to overcome. Why? They have developed competencies, skills. They have acquired intentionally and through experience and life knowledge. So becoming a certified HR professional typically involves taking a course or series of courses or passing an exam or a combination of the two. So some bodies you need to take course or courses and then also write and pass the e examination. Okay, are we together? Now, how important are certifications for a career in HR? Again, just to put it out there, there have been many people who started and ended their HR career and were never certified and they were successful. So I need to say that without it, you can succeed and excel. Let me just put that out there. Just like there are also people who didn't go to the university or the polytechnic and they are massively successful, perhaps even employing those of us that went to the university. So we are not saying that without it, you can't make it. No, nobody is insinuating that, okay? 
But there are certain areas that make these things important. And I suspect you also think it is important, and that's why you are subscribed to this session today, and you are the right place. One, for employment, an HR certification increases, you know, is increasingly becoming a job requirement. What do I mean by job requirement? When you see a job vacancy or advert that has HR, typically on the average, like 80 or 90%, if not more, of the advert, you will see phrases or words that will say something like CIPM or SPHR or CIPD or any other relevant certification. They may use qualifying adjectives like desirable. In some instances, you will see mandatory or compulsory or required. In some, they will say added advantage. So whether you like it or not, if you have them, it enhances your employability. Are we together? It is another area that can become important is in the area of what promotion. Research shows that an HR certification increases the chance of promotion at every job level. Okay, but it is also more important at early career. What do we mean here? People just entering HR because just like education is way important at your early career than later because people will want to know what you know, what credentials we carry. There is also evidence, especially from the West, that when you have HR certification, it tends to boost your salary and your earning power. Also here in the Global South, there's also empirical evidence to show that. Now, what this, there are multiple reasons for this. You will realize that when people become satisfied, okay, there's this kind of um, confidence they exude. Note, not arrogance, please. There's this kind of confidence. Suddenly, you uh, become aware of yourself in a new light. And you become conscious of the fact that you are knowledgeable. You know something. You are bringing value to the table. So, for example, your ability to negotiate salaries become more efficient. Because you think you have value and you know you have value. Of course, that knows dives into what? career development. Most HR certifications require recertification activities, such as continual education and on the job project. Check it, and almost all the certifications you know, even in CIPM here, you, you have HRPL, which is HR uh, practicing license, you renew it every three years. And the requirements to renew include substantially trainings done within a specific period of time, certain kind of responsibilities and exposures you have had. So being a certified person automatically confers on you the responsibility to continue to pursue knowledge, to continue to pursue capacity building. Hope we are together. Certification also exposes you to networking and resources. Networking because more often than not, the people who are certified will have meeting points. Take CIPM, for example. We have local chapters, Kegas, PPCA, um, DI, Surulere, Aja. Take SHRM, for example. You have SHRM Lagos. So all these professional bodies have both um, virtual and physical meeting points where the WhatsApp group, for example, where they interact and meet. You can share your concern, get, so to speak, free consultancy, solutions, and support. Now, if you are not certified in any of these bodies, you will not be eligible to be on any of their platform. Merely being on this platform enriches your, your know-how. And resources can be anything from, from templates. So for example, there are free resources today anybody can get on the SHRM website, but it's limited. People who are certified or who are free paying members now get exposure to template. So imagine you are supposed to, let me give a very quick example. During COVID, maybe you are supposed to come up with a COVID policy. No matter how experienced you are in Nigeria, we have never experienced that kind of situation before, except you have been born during the, is it 1912 now, the swine flu, um, you know, issue. Where, where will you start from? But because COVID, so to speak, got to certain part of the world before us, so they had a head start with respect to 
developing maybe policy and technique. At least you could get something from CIPD, SHRN, then tweak it, localize it, customize it. So they give you access to what resources, different kind of resources. So what should you consider when choosing an HRM certification program? I hope I'm not too fast. Please follow me. I have a lot to pour in the short time I, I, I have with us. One, subject matter suitability. Now, let me quickly say here that you have, for example, some HR certifications that are general, broad-based, so to speak. They aim to cover the entire value chain of the HR, so from attraction to, to exit and everything in between. Also, we have some HR certifications that are very focused, maybe focused around compensation and benefits, focused around learning and, and development. So for example, in Nigeria, you have NITAD, Nigerian Institute of Training and Development. That is focused on one area of the HR value chain. While CIPM, for example, so to speak, covers end-to-end -end the entire value chain. So that's what I mean by subject matter suitability. Sometimes some people will start with the general and then go to a specific. So also at the global level, you have, for example, World at Work that typically does a lot around, um, a lot around comp and benefits, a global workspace and the likes. You also want to check learning accessibility and flexibility. Now, some of these trainings or certification, you may be able to, for example, do self-study, some, you may need to do a course. CIPD, for example, if you go for a master's in certain HR programs in certain schools in UK, it gives you direct access or almost direct access, and you can easily earn relevant qualifications by the time you are completing your, your, your master's. Learning accessibility and flexibility. Are there materials to study? Are there communities, physical, online? Are there training centers accredited to do this? So take CIPD, you will hardly find anybody, any training center saying come for CIPD training. That is an access issue, in quotes. But you will see, for example, for SPHRI, GPHRI, APRI, SHRM, CP, or SCP. So that is learning, accessibility, and flexibility. Because you also need to know what, what kind of learner are you? Are you a learner that thrives best if you go for physical lectures or can you thrive under LMS or with certain ma materials? So you want to also consider, there are some exams, they do it at specific times of the year. Some you can do it almost any time. So are you someone that you can run on a self-paced? Can you, are you self-motivated? Okay, so when choosing your HR certification, consider the learning format. Consider the community availability by community people. So for example, if you're in Nigeria, yeah, in Lagos, for, for instance, and you are doing CIPN, there are so many study centers around. You can go for virtual classes, physical classes. In the physical class, you can even have WhatsApp group, study group. You can have reading mates, people you are rubbing minds together. And these things are important in themselves as you get support. So for example, you are becoming discouraged, you get people to push you, and maybe you are not, you are lagging behind your reading. The, you know, the energy, positive vibes from your colleague will push you, you have questions. There are things you'll be able to motivate your, your, yourself together as a, as a collective, okay? So looking at core HRM functions, many certifications, especially at the senior level, Okay, focus on skills such as um, leadership, okay, strategic thinking, and people management. Look at those keywords here now leadership, strategic thinking, people management. A good HRM certification program should cover leadership skills extensively, as well as topics around vision and strategy. Okay, now. Let's narrow down a little and look at some HR certification bodies. In Nigeria, the principal HR certification body is the Chartered Institute of Personnel Management. I'm aware that there are certain other bodies who claim 
to you know have done some past registration or are in the works, but the prominent one, the recognized one, and the only one is what CIPF. I encourage every Nigerian resident in Nigeria practicing HR to get it. I have it. I am proud to have it. I've gained tremendously. I'm gaining tremendously by being a member. Are we together? Now, for the foreign one, you know, today people talk about SHRM and HRCI, like they are Siami twins or like they are competing. So to provide context, it may benefit a few people here who may not be aware. I'm aware some people here already know this history. In, until 2014, HRCI and SHRM were exactly one and the same body. It was in 2014, due to some, let me choose my words carefully, some alignment issues that they separated and parted ways. So sometimes when people are quarreling, HRCI is better than SHRM. SHRM is better than HRCI. It's almost like saying Taiwo is better than Kendi, or Kendi has more blood of his father than Taiwo. Really and truly, up till 2014, they were together. Yeah, there might have been some divergence in the last few years or focus on some other things in the last few years, but you will see that at the root, at the foundation, they may technically be the same or almost the same, such that they could easily substitute each other, in my own honest personal opinion. Okay, so I won't put that out. Okay, each now does his own certification. You will even see that anybody who has become certified prior to 2014, prior to 2014, has both qualification. They will by default have SHRM. SCP or CP and SPHRI by default, because all the members by the time of the split, once you follow both of them, they both gave you the credentials. It's only people who are joining later that you now have to do the different um, exams to become certified on a separate um, note. Okay, we also have the um, CIPG, which is principally for UK. So. Look at this. HRCI has been offering certifications for over 40 years. It is well recognized in the HR community. There are more than 50,000 HR professionals in more than 100 countries that have earned certifications from HRCI. HRCI means Human Resource Certification Institute. Okay. They principally you know, offer about four types of certifications. Okay, and the core difference is the level of seniority and the minimum experience required to, and um, qualifications required to enroll in any of these exams. So you have the PHR, Professional in Human Resources. You have the SPHR, Senior Professional in Human Resource. You have the APHR, Associate Professional in Human Resource. And then we have the GPHR, Global Practitioner a global professional in human resource. For the SHRM, again, SHRM is Society for Human Resource Management. It is the largest HR membership organization. So you can be a member of SHRM, for example, and not be certified. You just pay for membership and you join. And you can be a member and be certified. Okay, so it is the largest HR membership organization focused on professional development it has supported more than 100,000 employees, representing more than 140 million employees worldwide. Okay, so in 2014, of course, after the split, they launched a competency-based certification program for HR professionals. Okay, so they, they are big, they have resources, they support their members, and they have two major certifications, unlike the other parts in the last four. And the two are SHRM CP, that CP stands for Certified Professional, and SHRM SCP, SCP stands for what? Senior Certified uh, Professional. Okay, so let me also show some other, throw some other light, because I was asking myself questions 
that if I was to attend a webinar that will address this topic, what would I like the facilitator to speak to? And in responding to that, I was able to come up with this outline and some of the things I'm speaking to. So one of the questions I asked myself, you know, let me speak in um, Nigerian street language. You will hear something like, who certification or help? You know, all these certifications, especially the foreign ones, they don't come cheap. Every year they become more expensive, even though their price is the same. But because of the devaluation, of continuous devaluation of the Naira, it becomes, so if you want to do any certification, do it this year, not next year. I promise you, it's not a prophecy. You will pay more for it next year. And then you will pay more for it in 2024. So eat your frog right now and get it out of the way if it's something that is important to you. The question is, if I do this certification, how does, how does it impact my pay and career pro projection? So the latest data I was able to get was 2018. I couldn't get for any more recent um, time period. Now, just to show you some statistics and data to help you also make up your mind in case you are still on the borderline or to reinforce your conviction if your choice has been made in terms of forging ahead with embracing certification. And also if you are certified so that you can be more conscious in extracting value from this certification you have paid so much for to acquire and to decertify over time. Generally speaking, about 36.4% of HR professionals have at least one certification. So, Assuming this data is still very current today, if you already have one certification, that means you're already in the 36.4% of your profession. You're already in the minority class, which is a good place to be because it means about 63% of the people in the market don't have certifications. That gives you an edge. Now let's look at this percentage of people who have these certifications. So for PHR, about 16.9% of people have it as a 2018 data. For SHRMCP, about 15.4% of professionals have it. For SPHR, about 7.9% of professionals have it. For SHRM SCP, about 5.3% professionals have it. For APHR, about 0.7% of people of professionals have it. So it means the certification with the highest number of people that own that credential is PHR, followed by SHRMCP. Now, something is clear here. The people at the junior cadre of HR pay a little more attention to certifications than people at the senior cadre. Because the people at senior cadre, for example, they'll be able to leverage strictly on their experience, their connection, and their network. Are we together? Okay. So let's look at some other statistics. This will help you quite insightful. Now, please stay with me. Make sure you are looking at your screen right now on your phone, your laptop, whatever device you are joining from, you will get full value by following this slide. It's intentional. Now you will see various cadre of HR professional, ranging from human resource assistant at the lower level to chief human resource officer at the uppermost echelon. In between, you have roles like HR generalist, HR manager, vice president HR. Now, one funny thing here, you will see that higher level HR professionals are more likely to have an HR certificate. In other words, the more senior the person is in office in portfolio, the likelihood the person will have a subject. Now, look at the screen right now. The population with the relative highest certification are the chief human resource officers. 55.7% of them have one certification or the other. I put it to you. If you are on this call and you are not satisfied and you want to be CHRAO and you are praying, you know, are you taking the right steps? Because the people will probably interview you for these roles, we love it. Would they see you as part of them or see you as laid back or lazy or lacking ambition? The people with the lowest are HR assistants, 5.2%, and it's understandable because maybe some of them are still new. Some of them are still trying to 
confirm if they want to be in HR for the long term or HR is a transit window for them or they're trying to raise funds to do some of these exams. They don't, they don't come cheap, you know. So how do HR certifications impact on pay? Now, this is a data for a specific period. It may not be 100% accurate as of today, but looking at the screen right now, generally speaking, people who have professionals who have GPHR, that is Global Practitioner Professional Human Resource, 16% of them, they claim they got a pay boost by 16% on, on the aggregates, rather not 16% of them. On the aggregates, GPHR orders claim they got at least 16% pay boost. On the aggregates, SPHR orders, okay, claim they got 9.6% pay boost on the aggregates. Note, these two certifications are from the same body. While for SHR MSCP, they got about 5.7% pay boost. For SHR MCP, they got about 3.9% Pay boost. Note, these are aggregates. There may be individuals that got 100% or 200% across any of these applications. So these are aggregates at a particular point in time for a specific um, audience. Okay, for PHR on the aggregates, they got about 2.9% boost. The key take away for me is that all of them got pay boost, confirmed, validated. When you are certified, you enhance your capability to get a pay boost. HR certifications will help with your what? Career progression, okay? It will help in your career profession that has been proven, doesn't matter your, your role, doesn't matter how, how junior or how senior you, you are. For example, I only got foreign certifications in, in 2020. Before 2020, I only had CIPN. But by 2020, during the COVID year, I just said, look, everything has gone global. Let me also have global relevance and global certification. And I did first my SPHR and I passed. And 35 days later, I did my GPHR and I even passed with IR magic. Are we together? So that's to also tell you, even if you think you are veteran or you are senior, don't be too senior to enhance your capability. Please, education is something we must pursue. Knowledge is something we must pursue. In fact, the more senior you are, the more you need it because you are handling high stake decisions. Any mistake you make, the consequences will not only be for you, but imagine for the 4,000 staff, the 500 staff under your watch. So you must be at the frontier of, uh, of knowledge acquisition, okay? And this is very important, no matter who is on this call. All right, so how do you choose the right certification for you? These are questions you see from time to time on different um, HR platforms or in um, HR gatherings or when you're in a webinar like this. Because there are so many options. You want to know, should I do this? Should I do that? Again, doing any is better than not doing any. I'll say that again. It looks like a tautology. Doing any HR certifications is way better than you not doing any. So if, for example, you decide to say which of them is the cheapest and you go and do it, at least you have already taken a quantum leap from not doing anything at all. So some people want to do a certification, they don't have money. If it is CIPM, your money rich, I beg, enter the space, the place. Enter the space. You are already in root greatness. But let me give you some rules, some guidelines to, to help you. Okay, one, you should consider your what career goals. Okay, we don't just take decisions in isolation. We just don't take decisions because every other person is writing an exam. You two are going to write it. Or all your friends are writing exam A. You are, you are also going to write exam A. It may be exam D that is more suited in line with your own career goals. Again, I mentioned earlier, but let me recap that generally, for example, HRCR, SHRM, certification tend to have a broad focus for generalists, where ATD and World at Work certifications are more specialized. Okay, ATD is an association of training development, if I'm not mistaken. So many professionals choose one of either HRCM 
or SHRM certification first, and then later go and focus or specialize in a niche area, such as human resource management, compensation, or training and development. Now, Anthony Howard said something, and listen to this, and please don't take it out of context. I will elaborate for that. Anthony Howard said that the choice to get certified is dependent on your aspiration. And I'll give an example. It said it's also dependent on where you are at a time. He said, for example, if I, that's him, Anthony, say if I, Anthony Owen, I work for the government today, and I will always work for the government, then what, what do I need a certification for? In other words, in his country, being an HR practitioner in the government, they don't place any premium on HR certification. He said, if I were a long-term government employee, looking to private into the private sector, I will push this certification. In other words, he is saying that in his country, as at the time he made this assertion, this claim, if you submit your HR certification to the government, they won't because of it promote you. They may not give you any special recognition. But if have in mind that oh, I may leave this government job and try private sector or go and become a consultant. He said he will pursue a certification. In other words, he's being guided by his long-term goals and not just the fact that today I need it or I don't need it. And let me put this out here. We are HR professionals in, in, in aspiring or existing. Look, in HR, we know that from time to time, there are changes in organizational ownership of board. One day, there will be a Joseph that doesn't know far out. And this is, this is reality. We must say it the way it is. One day, there will be a Joseph that will not know far out. In case of the non-belief um, Christians on this call or non-Bible scholars who may not understand that program, one day, you will have a new management in your organization that may not recognize all your hard work of the past. Next thing you will hear, they will call, don't let me mention it. They will call any of the top four consulting firm. They will say they should come and do skill audits. They should come and revalidate. They will tell all of you to submit your credentials. They may say, oh, you are five in the department. We want to retain two. And then suddenly your skills, your knowledge, your credential and certification may be the defining factor. Either because those certifications will have equipped you to come across as excellent or we also substantiate why they should retain you. Maybe there are two people, one is certified, one is not certified. One has qualifications in HR, one doesn't have. Rule of thumb, who would you throw off the boat? Is the Noah, I'm sorry, is the, what's his name? Jonah. The Jonah here, I mean the uncertified. The uncertified is uncircumcised. Permit my use of lingo, but I know some of you here, you will get what I'm saying even more than just using ordinary English. Also, to choose the right HR certification for you, you may need to what? Check the qualification that you already have, okay? Some of these certification, I showed you quite a number earlier, they have different entry requirements, and I'll still show you shortly in a more, more detail, okay? Also, ask for recommendations. So there are HR people who have known you for a while, who are close to you. Sometimes, um, while you can talk to a stranger for a recommendation, I prefer you talking to somebody who has known you for a while. Do you understand? For example, if I call my, my governor, my TCN community group governor, Ima Clark, to say, ah, Ima, look at the options before me. What do you suggest for me? Ima will not just advise me from what she knows. She also advise me because she has known me for a while. She'll be able to say, ah, only any, this is more your strength than that. But if I go and call um, maybe David Orich, who doesn't know me, maybe I just meet him at a meeting, I say, oh, David Orich, what should I do? This, this, this. He will advise me based on him, not based on me. So ask for a recommendation, especially from maybe senior people or even peers who know you. Also consider the time commitment. You see, different exams have different level of detail preparation. If you may have the intelligence, do you have the time? Check your circumstance. Maybe you have three or four young children, two twins, back to back, six and eight. Will you be able to read? I don't want you to just spend your money and waste it 
junior school fees, you will go and use it on certification and you don't pass. Bible says that we should count the cost. That if any of you will build the house, you will count the cost. Can you create? So sometimes it's not money, the time to read, to go for lectures. Some of these lectures can be neck breaking maybe every Saturday. Right now, I just arrived from CIPM Study Center. We have been teaching since morning. All these young men and women left every other thing, and that's how they do it every Saturday. If you invite them for a wedding, they won't come. They don't, they won't be at the big conference in church today. Why? It's just for a while. After their certification, they will go back to their normal life. So the, the time commitment, in fact, it may affect your relationship with even family members because you may not have time to ch um, chat, you know. Again, if you did requirements to stay certified. Note, for most certification, it's one thing to become certified, it's another thing to remain certified. Some of them, every three, three years, you have to do the certification. Some, you may need to do another exam. Some, you may need to have clocked certain number of hours in, in training, some in free training, some both free and paid training. So don't just become certified to a body without knowing the long-term commitment it, um, it requires. Of course, it's a no-brainer. You must what? Consider the cost. Now, certification costs vary with the type of certification. Generally speaking, for example, uh, SHRF certifications are cheaper than HRCR, generally speaking, okay? However, funny enough, generally speaking, based on data, people tend to pass HRCI more than SHRF. You can see the flip side now. You will pay something. But depending on where you work, some organizations pay for the certification of their staff. And any good organization to, to, to aim to, to, to do that. So let's quickly, at a glance, look at uh, some of these um, certifications, the popular ones, and look at the, 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 the scope and the eligibility criteria. Again, this is a very beautiful time to be looking at your screen right now. Please let your eyes be fixated on the device you are joining this webinar from, your tablet, your phone, your laptop. Look at it. You will see more if you look than just listening to me. Okay, so I'm drawing your attention. Please come look, 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 hold your device. Look at it. There are different categories here. Knowing that the immediate constituency I'm talking to are the matured but new to HR, Generally speaking, the first two may not be your core because you will you probably, you will have more, I don't expect any mature person to have was on this call based on the profile of the people here. I'm not saying having was or why is a bad thing, please. I don't mean it in that way, all right? But just because there are also other people here, maybe who just got invited, I mean, be in this category. So for APHRI, what you need is WAHEC, okay, or diploma. You don't also need any work experience. You understand? So if you don't have any work experience and all you have is work, then you can do APHR. Now, if you don't have work experience or, or you don't have a degree, you may not be able to do the others. There is a limiting limitation here. So check, what do you have already? What you have already will not give you an idea as to where you can start or where you can begin. For the PHRI, SHRM, CP, okay, you will typically need a degree, okay, and two years of people management experience, or a diploma, or something like ONG now, plus four years of people management experience. So where you have a diploma, you need more years of experience than when you have a degree, where you need those two years of experience. What do you have? That's the question. What do you have? For SPHRI or SHRM SCP, they are also slightly close. SPHRI, you need a master's degree, for example, or a second degree, plus four years of people management experience. While for SHRM SCP, a first degree plus five years experience. So those exams are the Taiwo and Kendi in exams I told you about. They, they are close to each other. That's what I mean by Taiwo and Kendi for the Nigerians who have stayed long in diaspora, okay? Then the other one, which is the GPHR, okay, has peculiar scope. One, you must have demonstrated said expertise of multinational human resource. What do I mean by multinational? Maybe the company you are working or you have worked with in the past, 
you have branches across countries. Let me give you an example. Nigeria, Ghana, Benin, and Togo. That's multinational. So people think multinational must mean Europe or US. That is already multinational. So take Global Corp, okay? That is a maybe Nigeria, Ghana, Togo. That's a multinational. Or let me use other brands, um, GTB, Access Bank. Some of these banks are in like 5, 10, 15 African countries alone, and probably in London, Paris, and China. Multinational. Of course, let me now say the ones you like to, to hear about. Shell, Chevron, Mobile, Alibotin, and so on and so forth. You must have two years experience in any of such organization and a master's degree in human resource management. You must also have three years experience plus bachelor's degree or four years experience plus FAEC. And you must have responsibilities, including global HR policies. So let me quickly say this, and it's part of this training, that you will see that experience and, and knowledge are malleable. The more education you have, the education and experience can trade off for each other. So if you have more education, less experience, or more experience, less education. So if you have a lot of experience and you add more education to it, you are shoring up your credibility and your earning potential and vice versa. Just to say here that there are different examination formats and timing. Don't forget, today we are looking at all you need to know about HR certification, and that's why I'm giving you this level of detail. I hope I'm making, um, communicating. I hope I'm giving you value, okay? I, I hope you are following me. Now, for AP HRI, typically 90 multiple choice questions, one hour, 45 minutes. Okay, it's not theory, it's OBJ, computer-based, can do it from almost anywhere in the world at any prometric test that is accredited. For PHRI, you have 115 multiple questions that you must do in two hours, 45 minutes. For SPHRI, 140 multiple choice questions that you must do in three hours, 15 minutes. Okay, for CIPM2, now these exams, and even GPHR, they are one exam. In other words, you prepare for the exam, you do one exam, you pass, you are certified. CIPM has stages. Let's assume that you get all the exemption possible, maybe because you have a master's and the like. Minimum, you do P1 and P2. Some you have to start from intermediate one, intermediate two, P1, P2, intermediate you know, two, P1, P2. So again, that's another difference between the, I don't want to use the word local, the indigenous exam and foreign. For any of this foreign one, you can approach it, do one exam, bam, they are certified. For our indigenous one, at the minimum two or three or four diets. So it takes time, but the advantage to that is, it makes your learning cumulative and uh, sustainable. Um, I can't remember right now the number of uh, questions, is it 50 or something? There are also multiple choice. So you may do maybe four papers in the diet or five papers for P1. P2 has four papers. It and the two has four papers. You know, I think there are about 50 questions. I can't remember the time duration. Some of my colleagues who have done CIPM at the same time, you can drop the a number of questions and the time limit for each question per diet in the, in the chat box. All right. Okay. Again, let me quickly share some insights as to passing your HR certification. You shouldn't spend that much money and not pass it, okay? You should not have committed that much time and not pass it. You should not have sacrificed so much, even your family, work, friendship, church, to some extent, and not pass it. So let me just give us a few acts. Some you already know, but you may not be practicing it. Create a study schedule. See, you have to be consistent. You know when we're in secondary school, you know the serious student. I'm not talking about some of us. We know the serious student. God bless you if you are serious. And now, if you are not serious, then you have to be serious for this one. You are now the serious student I'm talking about. Get a clear study schedule well in advance of the exam. It takes most people, emphasis on most. You know your personal strengths, okay? It takes most people at least 45 days to prepare adequately for the exam. You may need 60 days. 
you may need 90 days. It also depends on your time availability and how your schedule is, is, is scripted. Create a detailed weekly or daily schedule and follow through. Emphasis on follow through. The more regular you study for the test, the more you increase your chances of facing the exams. A few hours daily studying course materials, watching videos, taking practice test exams will help you. And when I say practice test, so not that you are doing a test, for example, you do five questions, you go to the kitchen, then you come back, you do another six questions, no, mba. You, if you are doing the two and a half hour exam, you will start and do all the questions in two and a half hours in exam condition. You will put off your phone, no distraction. You are not going to the restroom, nothing. Because when you are in the exam condition, is exam condition that will apply, okay? Finally, consider taking full length practice test closer to the exam date. This exercise will help you prepare mentally for what? Long exams. I need to tell you this. When you start the exam, by the time you are entering 19 minutes per hour, you will know that when you are exercising your brain, it takes a lot of energy. If you are not careful, you can become very hungry. You can become very thirsty. But if you have done tests upon test simulations, you will have been prepared for, for this day of battle so that nothing will catch you on our ways. I encourage you as much as possible, join a study group. It's like an accountability system, a body system. If all of you begin to study together, no matter what, if, for example, you have the tendency to procrastinate and say, oh, I will do the next diet, your friends will say, no, let's do this thing together. Let's study together. Let's pass together. Let's celebrate together. Let's rejoice together. It is good to, you know, not forsake the gathering of what believers. Also, for example, the gathering of students, very, very paramount, okay? HR certification exams draw a lot from real work experience in addition to the knowledge bodies. So getting perspective from your colleagues, maybe you are doing group discussion, you ask a question, you share your answer. Why is it the answer? Look at the ones that are not the answers. Why are they not the answer? Because next exam, they can flip the question and flip the solutions. So don't just know the answer. The ones that are not the answer, why are they not the answer? They may be the question in another exam. Get familiar with the exam. At the very least, find out what will be in, in the exam you plan to take, what are the topics to take, what are the time limits, what are the formats, and um, multiple choice questions, okay? Um, how many minutes should you spend per question? Maybe 60 seconds or 90 seconds. Once you spend that 90 seconds, I don't know the answer, leave it and move on. Or if your approach is, if I don't know the answer, I will guess and move on or leave it, move on. When you finish, you may still have maybe 15 or 20 minutes. All the ones you moved on to, you cannot quickly check them. And either, hopefully, sometimes when, as you're writing exams, solutions to questions you didn't remember before will come to you, and you'll be able to answer with certainty, or you'll be able to you know, do 50-50, eliminate, and do intelligent guess if they are not doing um, negative uh, markings, okay? So SHRM, HRCI website, Offer a full breakdown of their exams and what to and what to what uh, expect. Evaluate your learning style. Prepare for the exam day. Now, as I custom and round up before we open to question and answers and also comments and also contributions from the many distinguished people on this call. You know, I know one or two people will still want to ask me, Emily, Emily, with everything I have said, and uh, which one should I do? So I got some answers from some of the answers some of my colleagues have also dropped on different platforms I belong to, and I articulated it here together. So this slide is not my thought, but I align with the thoughts. That's why I'm sharing it, okay? So somebody was asking, what should I do? Should I do HRCI or SHRA? And somebody said, it depends on the purpose for the certification, your HR experience and how it fits into your needs. A certification is more useful and easier to acquire if you connect it to the long-term use you want to put it to. All certifications are completely different in focus and in content. I'm sure this statement doesn't look strange to you based on our conversations so far. Now, 
just to provide a little bit of distinctness. The SPHRI focuses on bringing a senior HR leader to the strategic emphasis on what? Strategic. Somebody was asking just yesterday, how do you become more strategic? SPHRI will make you more strategic if you're on this call. That's Rema for you. HR leader to the strategic and policy issues in business and HR. So the strategic and policy issue here focuses on both the business and on human resource management. It is more experience and practical based. Are we together? More experience and practical based. So you will find content like one, business leadership. Two, HR service delivery model. Three, talent management. Four, HR metrics and analytics. I mentioned that it's slightly expensive, it's perhaps the most expensive, but it is slightly easier to pass. That was the one I did. Okay. SHRM SCP, on the other hand, is from a functional point of view and competency focus. You see that it's different, but you can't really say which is better. It now depends on you. Are you looking at strategy and policy, or are you looking at functional and competency focus? Both are good. And it depends on who you are, where you are going, and what you need right now. Its contents include discussion around people management, recruitment, training and development, compensation and benefits, employee engagement, and so on and so forth. Workplace management, globalization, diversity and inclusion, corporate social responsibility, risk management, and so on and so forth. It also focuses on the organization. For example, HR structure. For instance, organizational development, labor relations, technology, and so on and so forth. It is more affordable with a slightly lower pass rate. Are we together? Nobody should ask me which one they should do. I'm giving you insight to make you decide which one you should do. And I've told you what I did. Your call is your call, not my call. I know you brought me on this call to help you make a call. You will make the call by yourself. You have enough information to make the right call. GPHR is really an HR certification in its own world. Unlike the SPHRI or SHRM that certifies HR experience and competence, the GPHR focuses on the nexus. Nexus means interrelationship between human resource practice and international relations. HR and international relations. It satisfies HR's ability to guide the organization across multiple cultural and strategic initiatives. So if, for example, you want to be head HR, Africa and Middle East, the spirits and flesh should be telling you that this certification is for you, in addition to any other one you may have. Again, I mentioned earlier that you can have combination of certifications. I have a friend that has five. Me, I have three. CIPM for Nigeria, SPHRI, and GPHR. And it's because of what GPHR is speaking to that made me to go for it after acquiring my SPHR. CIPM, I mean, um, CIPD is um, just one minute. Let me do, okay, all right. Just one minute. I needed to correct something so that uh, we're all on the same page, especially because we're recording this. So CIPM helps with understanding our labor relations and laws. There is no foreign exam you will do it will teach you Nigerian labor law. If you go and enter Gobe one chance, you go and do something wrong and they take you to court. It is Nigerian labor law that will first and foremost be the area of consideration. 
is your knowledge of HR the Nigerian way that will help you or put you behind bars? That's why I say no matter what, don't ignore it. I have a few friends. They are all about internationalization. I'm all for globalization, but don't forget Jerusalem. This is our own Jerusalem, CIPM. CIPM is also popular with public sector HR people and younger HR professionals. Of course, it's affordable. You can do it in pieces, in bits, in batches, and you know, in pure cost and knowledge as you go. It helps us to understand the basics of HR management, especially for those who are making a career switch to HR. I teach it. I teach it. CIPD, which is the Chinese of Personal Department, is more remote, so, sort of, to our environment in terms of relative usefulness, but it is useful. But it's easier to acquire if you pursue a UK postgraduate diploma uh, program along HR. So the question is, why do you need an HR certification? Okay, so these are some exams. MP, I am a brand ambassador. Let me disclose for one of the certification bodies. And there are many uh, bodies in Lagos, Nigeria, who are registered to conduct um, trainings and help you with your exams. If you go to SHRM or um, um, HRCI, you will see all of them. So the one I'm showing here is because I'm their brand ambassador. Hello, it's okay. Now, these are some of the prices as at the last time. It may not be the same if you go and check next tomorrow. So for APHRI, it's about $270 for the exam. Okay, for PHRI, it's about $350 for the exam. SPHRI is $450. You will see GPHR is Baba at the top, is $650. Okay. SHRM CP is $475. SHRM SCP is also $475. You can check their websites for current um, pricing. But that was the last price the last time I checked. Focus on the dollar because the Naira is an approximation. I know our Naira is dancing because I changes every day. So at this point, I'm open to question and clarifications. Madam Moderator, you may please come and join me. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Adioshi. Please, let's go to the chat and recognize and appreciate him for this very insightful session. I told you, you are in for a smooth ride with, Yem, with um, Olu Yemi. I'm sure he didn't even want to stop. You know him now. I mean, a, a, once a teacher, always a teacher. I had to be chatting to say, oh, we need to round us now. Can take some questions and all that. You know, today is Saturday. We don't want to keep them forever here because I, I know that some people will still want to go and do one or two things in preparation for tomorrow. So thank you so much for that brilliant session. Honestly, thank you so much. As the session was just going on, I was just making a lot of notes and you you were actually making me remember those days of sitting for these exams how you really have to be deliberate about studying yeah. you have to go the if you really do not want your money to go to the waste then you have paid for this exam you must go all out to pass this exam so thank you so much you know um there's one thing he said he said it is better to do anyone than not to do anyone at all do one even if it is CIPM, it is better to have one than not to have any one at all, right? So please, let's make the effort, right? And a couple of other things you said about the importance of certification. It helps with employment, promotion opportunity, boost our career, salary boost. Then, of course, certification also validates our credibility as HR professionals, right? Then, of course, there are some things you need to consider before making a choice of which of these exams or certifications you want to go for. You want to look at time commitment. You want to ask people that have, you know, worked in that path before to advise. You want to also consider the cost. You have to, you know, create a worksheet and several other things that you spoke about. Honestly, we really do appreciate you. Thank you so much. And I can see that the chat is buzzing with appreciation and, you know, celebrating you. Thank you so, so much. So before we go into the Q&A session, we have a very esteemed, very esteemed person in our midst today also. And that's in the person of our amiable governor, 
the governor of the HR, that's Covenant Nation HR professional you know, uh, community. Our governor is here in the person of Miss Emma Clark. And as usual, we want her to come on board and just provide and share some knowledge with nuggets like she normally does. Emma, thank you so much. And please, the floor is yours. We want to see the pretty face and that beautiful voice. Emma, over to you. Thank you. Is she muted? All right, so while we're still waiting for her to come, maybe she has a little bit of a network glitch, which is so unlike her. You can start dropping your questions in the chat. I see a couple of questions in the chat. You know, you can, if you still have some questions, you can start dropping them in the chat while we wait for our amiable governor to, you know, just share one or two words of um, encouragement with us. Can drop your questions in the chat. We plan to end this session in the next 20 minutes the most. Like I said, it's a Saturday and I know we still have a lot of other things that we want to do. So while we're waiting for our governor to come on board, let me quickly go to the, some of the questions I see in the chat. Let me ask a, some of the questions I see in the chat. Okay, so the first one is from Jane Eschett. And she says, for someone with no HR background and no experience, what certification should the person pursue first? Okay, and um, thank you so much, Jane, for that question. I'll give you two, two options quickly. The first one is CITM. It will help you a lot. The other one will be the APHR high because you don't need any work experience. I mean, um, I mean PHRI. I want to assume you have a degree. If you have a degree, the PHRI. If you don't have a degree, then APHRI. So those are the, the two options available for you or SHRM CP. Okay. You, 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 you can check, but your best bet, CIPF or APHRI, because for those two, you don't need any experience and you'll be able to start at the corresponding level. Thank you so much, Jane. Thank you so much um, for taking that question. And Jane, I hope um, you're clearer now. All right, so we have this question from Ola. Ola says, why does CIPM not consider work experience when giving you a diet? Okay, um, thank you so much. Um, the, the, the way CIPM exams are run, they, they recognize academic qualifications. So for example, if you are from the sciences, okay, the further away you are from social science or humanities, then the less um, exemptions you get. So if you are from the sciences or engineering, for example, you will start from um, in, in, in time, you have to do intermediate one, two, so that there are certain courses you will not have been exposed to, which are fundamental. But if you did a course like maybe business administration, economics, a first degree, you may start from intermediate and progress. If you have, for example, an MBA or a really very relevant master's, you start from PE1 and PE2. The way they, they've structured it, they've not like, it's not very easy to verify work experience and to codify it to what exemption it should fetch you. You know, different organizations, um, you know, the exam uh, organizations don't submit to examination bodies, but universities submit. There's NUC, for example, the international bodies that can value certificates and grade it. And that's the reason why CIPA does not give experience um, from an exam perspective. But let me quickly add this so that you get it clearly. So if your experience is in HR, there is something called practitioner's um, route. So if you have spent, is it seven years or eight years or more? I, I, I can't remember the exact. You will go through the practitioner's route. You won't do any exam, but there must be a minimum number of, um, what do you call it, training courses you have done, the place you have worked, and the grade you have attained. So there's a checklist and requirements to fulfill. Then they will do like an interview assessment for you. Then you will go through some courses 
and you go through induction and you become multiplied. But that way, it will be via practitioner's route, not via examination route. There's also the executive route. You might be HR director, and maybe you didn't do any certification earlier, but we have demonstrable HR experience. You go through the same process, they will validate your experience and exposure and give you um, certification via executive route. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ola. I hope that is clear now. All right, so um, there's this question from Olu Agbenga, and he says, can an MBA HR be considered for the second degree in HR? That's, can an MBA in HR be considered for second degree in HR? I think he's asking with regards to when you are showing the different criteria for the different certifications or the different exams and all that, yeah. So the answer will be yes, if the MBA is from a recognized um, institution, yes. All right, thank you. Okay, so Victor Onyeka says, please, can you proffer some tips on SHRM recertification points in terms of finance and strategy to end the recertification point so that we don't lose what we have earned? Okay, um, let me be a little direct. The first one, make enough money to be able to pay for courses and do it. That's the first one and slightly easier. The other one, which is complementary, if you go online, for example, go to Google, there are certain sites that will give you courses that are free. They might even be courses in the past, maybe last six months, three months, one year, that you can do for free, and there will be certification codes you can impute in your, in, in your log. So if, for example, you're a member of HRCI, you can almost get to the certified completely for free. Because every webinar they do, every program they do, and they do a lot of free webinars, there are codes at the end that you are entering your activity log and piling up. So even if you will pay, it will be very, very minimal. But the easiest one, spend some of the money you are making on learning and development. Thank you. Thank you so much. The questions are just pouring in, pouring in, pouring in, but um, we will try as much as possible to take as much or as many as we can. Okay, so this one says, um, how does the people management experience entail? Can experience outside HR be considered? How, what does the people management experience, what does it entail? And can experience outside HR be considered? So um, to some extent, all line managers have some people management experience. So the challenge will now be, how do you couch it on your CV that reflects. So for example, maybe you do training. It's a type of people management, certain uh, um, provisions, supervisions. So look inward, look at HR value chain, look at the HR areas, domains, look at your own experience. What can tick off genuinely as HR? Once you identify that, you may be able to get a reasonable chunk of some of your day-to-day -day activities that may qualify as people express and it can count it can count for you thank you so much judith is asking i have been approached by some training consults who have mentioned that you need to show evidence of training to be able to enroll for hrci or shrm courses these courses are very are really expensive and are just preparatory is this claim true can I register for these certifications directly if I study on my own? The answer is yes, yes, yes. You can register directly and pay. So for example, when I did my SPHRI, I did it at a particular training center. However, I realized that I had better knowledge of HR than my facilitator. Later, I discovered that my facilitator in that particular training center was not even satisfied. When I did my GPHR, I paid on by myself read by myself, went to the exam by myself, and passed to the glory of God. Yes, you can do it. But to yourself be true. It helps a lot if you go to for training. Just like we're having this kind of training now. You could have gone on your own and searched for the information we are discussing today, but you are here today. So if you can, go for it. But if you are that disciplined and diligent, by all means, get the right material and go for it. I think we have my governor, my governor, in my clock, I'm excited to see you. I feel energized anytime I see you. Good evening, Mark. 
Yes, Gov, Gov, you have the floor now. You're muted. All right, hi, everybody. How is everybody doing? I apologize for that uh, break in communication. Um, just as, as I was about to come on, everything just went crazy. My laptop froze, the internet connection went off. I think in Nigeria, they talk about village people things, but you know, village people things cannot affect us here. We are covered by the blood of Jesus. Amen. So this has been an extremely amazing um, event. I want to start, first of all, by congratulating the matured. Um, yes, Samuel, that is just the truth. Uh, <laughs> I want to congratulate the uh, matured but new to HR group for putting this extremely fantastic meeting together. It's a very important meeting, whether you are even, I learned a lot, okay, from the meeting, um, and uh, I took away some points. I would just like to add my own two lens to us on what it takes to actually get HR certifications. And he also talked about the importance of HR certifications. So what do I basically just want to say? Number one, you have got to look at taking HR certifications. Um, I always say this, you've got to compare the difference between doing an HR certification and doing a degree, all right? And much of that comparison has to do with you being able to understand what HR career track you want to be on, all right? I'm very fond of talking about HR career tracks because I want always to let people know that there are several HR career tracks. The generalist career track is not the only career track that is available to anyone who wants to study HR. There are other tracks. There is the consulting track, there's also the academic track, all right? And then I talk about also the developmental track. It's a track that people don't um, talk about, but those are the people who are in HR who work in the development world. So you've got to, whenever you're thinking about the type of qualification it is that you want to take, you've also always got to ask yourself, what track do I want to be on? So I'll give myself as an example. When I decided that I was going to anchor in HR, one of the things that I asked myself was, what is the track that you want to be on? I decided that I wanted to be on the, I had always been on the consulting track and I wanted to stay on that track. I, you know, uh, momentarily I have considered going into the managerial track or generalist track, but somehow or the other, I'm always drawn back to the consulting track. So when I did that assessment, what did I find out? I found out that certifications would not work for me because the average um, uh, consulting environment prefers to work with consultants that have master's degrees. So anytime you look at the job descriptions and you look at what it is that they're demanding, they will always ask you for that master's degree. Nevertheless, if you are thinking of going to the managerial track, there is no, it's, it's unadvisable for you to prepare for that track without a certification, even if you have a master's degree. For example, in the UK, most accredited degrees come with CIPD. So they will tell you this degree is CIPD accredited. And I remember that when I was doing my master's degree, I was in a university where they had three tracks. They had a track for the people who were going into the, uh, oh, sorry, and I forgot to talk about the labor track, okay? Labor relations track. They had a track for those people who were going into labor relations. They had a track degree for those of us who are going into consulting, and they had one for people who are going into the managerial track. That's why I know so much about this. Now, for those who are going into the managerial track, they insisted, we we're always laughing at them because they had more work to do than we did because they also had to do that CIPD, and there were some additional courses that they had to take because they had to do CIPD. So these are some of the things that you must reflect on. Secondly, Yemi has mentioned it already, but I'll just expatiate a little bit. When you're taking a degree, you've got to ask yourself what type of mode you are in. Are you in Japa mode or are you in local mode? 
This, these are things we have to consider because if you are in the jackpot mode, then a CIPM is not the certification you should be thinking of investing in. Nevertheless, if you are in the local mode and you're thinking of building yourself up at, on the managerial track here in Nigeria, then of course the CIPM is the track to be on. Additionally, in relation to locality, you've also got to understand that some certifications make sense in certain environments, they don't make sense in other environments. So I'll give you an example. Back to when I was in university again, doing my master's degree in HR, most of the Germans did not, they opted out of the generalist degree. And they said they, they, they prefer to either do the employee relations degree or they did the OB degree. And why was that? They said in Germany, CIPD means nothing, you know? So CIPD is something that tends to mean a lot for those in the UK and then in some other European environments. HRCI is a very good certification to do if you want to go to America or you want to go to Canada because it's highly recognized and then also SHRIM. Those two certifications are highly recognized in those areas. So these are the things that you have to think about, all right? In addition to what um, Yemi said, these are the things that you've got to add. So this entire issue of certifications or degrees, they have to be put within the context of what it is that you're preparing for in your life. So lastly, I wanna round off with one more thing. Life is about flexibility, the capacity to go in and out of different contexts and the capacity to be able to function within different contexts. In an environment like ours that is highly volatile and unstable, one will always advise people to be as flexible as possible. So even though I have said to you, do a degree if you want to become a consultant, do a certification if you want to go into the managerial track, I would also like you to encourage you to be flexible and to have the capacity. Yemi is very much like that. Yemi can be in the managerial. Yemi is set up to be in the managerial. Yemi can be a consultant. Yemi can also be a, an academic because Yemi is doing a PhD. I don't know how many of you know that Yemi is studying to, um, to do a PhD in economics, but there is an aspect of human development that also has to do with economics. So if he combines that with his certification, and I think Yemi also has an MBA, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. So he's that sort of person who can go in and out of um, any of these tracks that I just mentioned, okay? So guys, this has been an amazing, amazing um, uh, time together. I tend to always say that, you know, you've got to stop me because if you leave me, <laughs> I can be here, all right, talking and talking and talking and talking till tomorrow. So I'm going to do what is right. And I'm going to hand this back to um, Inkechi. Thank you so much. And Taiwo, you are amazing, amazing. I did the right thing, I believe. All right, you know what I mean. So thank you so much for organizing this. And I look forward to um more sessions like this this is the place to be guys so whenever you hear that the tcn hr professionals group is doing something please make sure you put aside time for us we're having something tomorrow the leaders are putting something together the c-suite academy they're putting together an amazing meeting you don't want to miss that all right then take care and i'm signing out thank you Emma. thank you so thank much you so please much. let's <laughs> appreciate our governor Thank you so much. In fact, somebody said, please continue. Somebody said she should continue, that she shouldn't stop. Thank you so much. Um, we appreciate you as always, and God bless you for all that you do. All right, so um, let's see if we can take two or three more questions before we call it a day for today, because we still have several questions. And thank you so much for recognizing and appreciating our governor. I can see the chat is buzzing. So somebody has asked, please, how do I join TCN HR group? This is the second time he's asking, how do I join TCN HR group? All right, so we'll drop the link in the chat. We'll drop the link in the chat. All right, so I'll go back to 
the question. Let's see if we can take some more questions. Sorry, Inkechi, I'm sorry to come in again and um, butt in and, you know, so concerning that question about how do I join the TC and Human Resources Professionals Group, let me tell you a little bit about that. Okay. We have two cohorts every year, one in March, one in September, okay? And every year we put out an advert to say that we are taking in members. So this cohort is closed, though if you are not part of the cohort, you are welcome to join us um, whenever we have open sessions like this. But when we are ready, we will put out an advertisement and you're welcome to join. So look out for that advertisement coming out. The next one will be in February. I encourage you to join. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Gov. All right. So let me see, let me see how many more questions we can take before, before we call it a day. Let me see, there's this question I saw. Let me see, let me see. Let's see. All right, so I'm gonna... Hello, can anyone still say I'm Kechi or? I can't see her too. I was thinking. Okay, to... I think she has uh, been locked out somehow. Yeah, she's supposed okay. to. Okay, let's see if we can take any more questions before we call it today. So someone says here yeah, for yeah. someone without a first degree in HR, mm -hmm. can one go on to do a master's in HR, especially if you are considering that part? Yes, you can do. Most um, HR masters, even here in Nigeria, allow someone from other background. It do not necessarily need to have studied human resources for your first degree. And then also abroad, they're even more open and allow people from various backgrounds to come and do a master's in human resources. Okay, there's one question here. For someone looking at being a specialist comp and ben, which is best for such an individual? Okay, so uh, first and foremost, my this is my personal approach to, to this and best practice approach that for certification, first do a generalist certification, which will include, for example, CIPM, SHRM, HRCI, and then you can now focus on this, what we call world at work. You can Google that, world at work. They have a um, focus on, um, on compensation and benefit. Then if you also do GPHR, certain components of GPHR speaks to, because when you have international mobility, there's funding and payment and allowances associated with all of these things. It will also give you exposure, but world at work has strong comp and benefits and orientation. You can look them up online. Thank you. Okay. Uh, another question, what if I work in a startup company under a renowned holding group? Will it count as a multinational experience? And then how, yeah, go ahead please. Multinational is very easy to define. It's not ambiguous. It means we are in multiple nations. And also it means you, 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 you can't be a startup, but it now depends on what you call startup. So let's be clear. So would you want to call, um, what's the name of this uh, company now? This unicorn, a startup. Um, what's the name of this? Um, someone should type it out for me. It's keeping my mind. There's, um, they are into payments, a flutter wave. Will you okay, call this? So if the startup is a flutter wave type, because the word startup can mean, we just started recently. Then Flutter Wave is a multinational. 
because it's all, all over Africa. But if it is real startup, TYT startup, you know what I mean? <laughs> we are just five. Nobody knows us. We don't know anybody. No. But if it's the kind of flutter wave type, yes, you are a multinational. It's okay. not by age, it's by where you play. Okay, so the continuation says, how often do they take the HRCI exams and how do I become more active with CIPM after getting my license? Okay, so technically you must, you can almost write the HRCI exam almost any time during the year, except of course, um, for days like uh, maybe public holidays and maybe Sundays. And why would you have this limitation? So they use prometric testing centers. Some prometric testing centers, for example, will not open on a Sunday or a Saturday. They do Monday to Friday. So if you will find, they, because the exam is electronic, is digital, once there is a accredited prometric testing center and there is space. So for example, when you care for your exam and then you want to register, you will, for example, choose the prometric testing center. Now, note that these prometric testing centers have limitation in terms of capacity. So to simplify it, if this is Oluyemi Taiwo Prometric Testing Center, don't mind me, I'm using my, my madam's name as the name of the fictitious center. And we can take 10 people to write the exam in a day. If 10 people have already booked before you, technically you cannot book with Oluyemi Taiwo Center for that day. Why? Another set of people have paid. The option will not be check other prometric testing center. For example, in Lagos, there are sitting space. Do you understand? But if not for that, on a good day, you could pay and do the exam on any free day subject to availability of seats. All right. The final question here says, how do I become more active with CIPM after my license? The easiest way, there's something we call chapters or, you know, PPC chapter. So for example, there's um, CIPM in Kenya chapter, there's CIPM in Victoria Island chapter, Apapa chapter. If you go to the website, you will see the different chapters. Either you pick the, cha there's Alausa chapter, for example. Either you pick the one closer to where you work or where you live, but I prefer where you work because most of their fiscal meetings will be during work hours. Many of them too now do because of COVID and post-COVID. They do virtual meetings. So you can be in any chapter and be participating virtually, but in case you want to be able to leverage on physical meetings too. So choose anyone close to you. They typically on the average meet once a month. So it's not very cumbersome. If you go every month, either for their virtual, uh, virtual or physical meeting, and then get uh, involved. All of them have subcommittees, uh, study center committee, education committee, membership committee. It's like you are in church. When you are in church and you are a member, it's good. But when you become a worker, Becoming that committee now puts you in the front burner. You are participating in activities, interacting with more people, and you will get more exposure and more opportunities to serve. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, this... All right. Thank you. So that's right. how Dolakwa is taking. Dolakwa is taking the closing prayer, so you can continue. Thank you so much. Sorry for the glitch. I had some terrible glitch on my end here. All right. Okay, you mean we can continue or we can end? Which one? <laughs> okay, you were asking for who is taking the closing. Yeah, but I was also on. saying, are you taking over? Oh, <laughs> so you can continue, Sati. Okay. When we are done, you can right. call on Dolapo to take the closing prayer. Right. It's fine. Thank um, you. Is there any other question? There's one question I saw on training institution. Let me see if I can. So we we responded to that earlier. All right. So I think we've covered most of the questions we have. So thank you so very much, uh, Mr. Ade Oluyemi Ade Oshu. Very clear session, honestly, very understandable. And like Emma said, you know, I also picked up a bit. And um, there's something that you said that I want to uh, remind us of. Uh, you said something about the fact that um, certification confers on you the responsibility to continue to pursue you know, continual certifications, you know, and knowledge. So you can't stop. Once you start, you continue. So uh, that's something that I want us to take home. So that's why you said, do your research, your long-term research, 
uh, make all your findings so that once you get into it, it's almost like you can't get out, you know, in quotes. So thank you so much. Uh, it's been a very enlightening uh, session. Um, we hope that when we call on you again, uh, you will be able to uh, join us. Thanks a lot. Okay, so let's have, thank you also to all those who are still left on the call. Can we now have the closing prayer, please? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, is that, uh, who did she say is taking the closing prayer? Dolakwa, Dolakwa Dola from thank group you so much. two. Group Mature two. professionals, but right. need to HR group two. Okay. Yeah, thank so Dolakwa, you. Dolakwa, please go ahead and take the closing prayer for us now. Thank you. I hope you're online. Dolakwa is still online. It doesn't look like she's online. Okay. All right, if Dolakwa is not online, anybody from group two, mature mm. professionals, but new to HR, group two, anybody from group two, you can take the closing prayer. Closing prayer. Thank you. Anyone from group two? Or if not, I'll just call on uh, Chiamaka. Chiamaka, please, can you take the closing prayer for us? Can you hear me, Chiamaka or Bolanle? All right. Hi, Taiwo. Um, Taiwo. Good Thank evening. You. Good evening, All everyone. Right. Let's go ahead and take the closing prayer for us. Thank you. All right. Uh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for the gathering of your people. Thank you for the facilitators. Thank you for the outpouring. We ask that as they've poured out from themselves and of themselves that you will replenish and that everything that we've heard on this call today will not fall to the ground, that we would be active listeners and participator, participators in, um, in and of this call. And that by the end of this section, that all the desires of our hearts towards joining this program will be fulfilled in Jesus' mighty name we've prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chiamaka. So thank you, everyone. Uh, don't forget the CIS youth has their own um, fire chat tomorrow. Let's continue with our group discussions, you know, and all the other activities. Thank you. Have a great time in church tomorrow for those of us that are going and have a good night rest. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mkechi. Bye. Thank you, everyone.